Hello, uh, welcome to I Love Ruby. So, in this uh, video, I want to talk to you about something like Jupyter Notebooks, Jupyter Lab, and all those stuff. So, what is actually Jupyter Notebook? So, let me just search for it and show it to you so that, like, so this is called as Jupyter. So what you can do is like, you can do something like interactive computing. So like, okay, let me just put like, try it in browser and something like that. And uh, okay, so, okay, so yeah, there is, okay, how to use Jupyter with this one, okay. Okay, I don't know whether this will give me something uh, to try it out or something like that, okay, so. Okay, it's starting something. I don't know how long it'll take. Okay, so let me just uh, show you a demo of it. So in my local, so that like, okay, this one is starting. Anyway, it's taking a long time. Okay, so let me just put like Jupyter Lab in my terminal and look yeah what you do it in local is fast okay so that's the thing right and yeah this is what jupyter lab is okay so this one shows for python okay this is in a site called binder or something like that so i think after some time this will just go up so i can just put something like coding over here so one plus two what is one plus two right so that's how it is so so yeah i've got something like a uh, ripple like read evaluate print loop uh uh, and that's running in a web page and since it's running in a web page uh, what to say like uh, you can have a lot of interactive su stuff and all those stuff so think it like ripple on steroids okay so that's the thing so this is my jupyter lab so like uh, i have installed it so how to install it is uh, like there is a thing called anaconda anaconda python just go to anaconda all these links i'll just try to put okay so so just go over here. Yeah, there is this thing called individual edition. So that's the thing. So you just need to install it. And uh, and if you put Jupyter Lab, you'll get something like this. Okay, so you'll get something like this one, right? And okay, before, uh, okay, and you can see like, okay, I've installed something for Ruby and two things for Clojure. Of course, one thing doesn't work. Another thing for Clojure only works. Then I install for Julia. Usually I use Clojure. Julia for my data, uh, Julia and Python for my data science stuff. Uh, and then I'm just do using Ruby for my web programming stuff and all those things. Okay, so that's the thing, right? But the thing is like I can do Ruby snippets very quickly and I can, uh, uh, what to say, evaluate it and it's kind of ripple on steroids. And so that's the major thing. Okay, so let me just shut it down, right? And I will show you like how to, uh, install it okay so that's the thing so there is a gem called iruby i'll also give this link okay so so the first thing i need to give is like about anaconda uh, and then i need to give this uh, iruby link okay so this is how you install it on ubuntu so the instructions are given right and i use mac unfortunately so this is the instructions right and uh, okay so when you do that and when you put like okay like you just go to some folder and you just put like jupyter lab right it presents you options like it it shows stuff like kernel like ruby kernel gets registered with this jupyter lab when you execute those commands and it just shows something like that and so you can just put something like a ruby kernel like this okay so uh okay like uh i can just rename it like uh i ruby example okay i ruby okay something like that and then i can just put uh, do something like put this hello world okay so that's the thing right and i can do some math operation like a one star two power 89 or something like that that will give you a very large number and all those things and yeah i can do even some complex stuff okay so something like class circle okay and accessor radius okay let me put it like attribute accessor radius and then uh let me just put like area right and then uh, okay over here i can just put something like okay pi is equal to 3.14 or something like that 
Or let me just put it like 22 by 7. So 22 by 22 dot F to F. Or let me just put like 22.0 by 7, right? So this will be in float, okay? So attribute axis or radius. And this will be pi star r square, okay? So that's the thing and ENT. So, and I can just put something like that and I can just, uh, okay. Okay. And look, I just get something like this, okay, like, right, okay. So what I can just do is like, I can just evaluate this code right over here. Uh, C, okay, let me just put C, I'm just really lazy. But in professional programming, don't put variables like this one, okay. And yeah, this one works fine. And okay, C dot radius, radius. equals seven right that two seems to work fine and what is c dot area right so <laughs> so yeah yeah look i just got an error over here so what i can just do is like immediately like do something like this one r a d i u s radius right and once again evaluate it so look, I'm just doing evaluate, evaluation and testing right over here, right? So yeah, so it seems to work fine. So this is the advantage of IROB. Like if other programs means, yeah, I need to write it in something like, uh, what to say, a text editor or something like that. Then I need to come out and uh, come to the terminal and I need to execute it and see and all those stuff. And yeah, once you have just done it, yeah, you can just put it something like this. Like you can just put it, put it all in just one cell and just copy it or paste it in a text editor. And so you just, you've just got a program or something like that. So yeah, so this thing, I, I want to put it at the start of my book. Okay, so, so that like uh, people will install it early and start doing it. So possibly all, almost all my book can, uh, all my, uh, yeah, it says, yeah, the constant has already been initialized over here. So it just says, come on, like, how can you initialize constant and all this stuff? So, okay, but anyway, like, not a big problem. It's only a warning, right? So, and of course, it looks like pi has been already been defined in Ruby. So, uh, that's the thing. So, so yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is what iRuby is. For that, you first need to go, go here, Anaconda, this individual edition, install it, okay? Or there is even a thing called mini conda, uh, M I N I C O N D. I just hate because it's just Python centric and all those stuff. But yeah, like uh, in data science, Python has taken super bleed. Okay, so that's the thing, right? So there is this mini conda you can install it. This is a lighter version. I think I installed it mini conda or something like that. Yeah. So and uh, it's better to install anaconda. Like if you have space in your computer and all those stuff. Okay, so. That's the thing. And I know some stuff uh, like uh, to pull and install some new stuff if I need. So I, I install Miniconda. So not a problem, right? So for beginners, it's better to install Anaconda and then uh, go here, install this iRuby and what to say, just put like Jupyter Lab. You'll have a screen like this, click this one and you'll get some file over here. You can just rename it like, okay, iRuby and all those stuff. and practice it okay so so uh this will increase your speed and possibly you can practice one example and you can also practice some other example like uh i don't know what to say like okay like if you want to practice something about hash or something like that okay so you can just practice two or more sections over here so hash dot new zero so if i just put like hash of uh okay mm, what to say abc this should be zero right so you can just go on and practicing like this and uh, hash dot get uh abc or something like that does get work i don't know okay so i think i need to put like d right d right yeah fine so yeah so you can just keep on practicing and uh another good thing about this is like okay you can even put comments over here, like, okay, let, uh, let me just drag this cell over here and you can put some comments like, okay, like, 
hashes in Ruby. Uh, this comment follows a thing called Markdown. So if you want to know what Markdown is, uh, you can just Wikipedia it or something like that. But there is a thing called Markdown guide. I don't know whether this will be good good enough or something like that. Okay. Um, learn the ropes. Dive into. Uh, I don't know. Like uh, this doesn't look good. This doesn't look good. Okay. Right. Uh, so. Uh, okay, dive into syntax. Yeah, this is how, like, okay, heading level one, heading level two, and all those stuff. Okay, so, and uh, what to say? Uh, and uh, paragraphs, line breaks, uh, images. Okay, there's also images. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so you can also put something like image like this. Okay, everywhere in San Francisco, right? Okay. So you can also put image like this. Uh, okay, you just double click it to edit it. You can also put an image like this. Oops, it's not pulling that image. I just don't know. Oh, okay, it says assets and all those stuff. So, okay. so I'll just copy the image link over here, right? So double click it to edit it and this is the absolute URL of the image. Okay, so that's the thing. Okay, right. So yeah, I've got images and all those stuff. So this makes it easy for scientists to dig into data and uh, verify data and all those stuff. But of course, you can use it with Ruby. You can use it to learn Ruby. And possibly even code some snippets for professional programming and uh, uh, do it. Okay, so that's the thing. And uh, if you want to stop this one, you can, okay, do a thing called shutdown kernel. Like, yeah, and I don't know why it's putting this ugly, this stuff. Okay, so it doesn't shut down. And possibly if you want to start it again. Okay, let me just close this. Uh, save. Okay, right. Let me just open it. Right, okay, yeah. So now this is there, okay. I don't know why the 16 is putting something like this. Okay, right, okay. Okay, hash dot new, hash ABC and this one, right? Okay, so I can once again start it and all those things, okay. So, so this is a very, very uh, uh, good thing. And uh, apart from this markdown also, there are three types of cells. This one is code cell. This one is a markdown cell. As you can see, it just varies over here. Another thing is raw, like, uh, Four cells hidden, okay. I don't want four cells to be hidden, right? Another thing is like called raw, like okay, you can just put uh, okay, uh, one plus two in Ruby. Yeah, this is just raw, this is just like plain text or something like that. And over here, you can just put like default is code cells, okay. So one plus two, so that's the thing, right? So a very, very great tool to learn Ruby, and uh, you can. Even if you make mistakes, you can just iterate it rather than going to the text editor and once again to the terminal. So yeah, just do it. And there is this foundation called SciRuby. Like if you're interested in data science and if you're doing Ruby, there is a thing called SciRuby, but it doesn't take in, what to say, um, hold or something like that. Very, very bad. Like uh, I was one guy who, who even tweeted to Matt saying like, we need something like first class AI stuff on Ruby and all those things. But I don't know, like, maths has this not only maths like i think the ruby community why just say maths 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 okay like okay he he's the inventor of this language and he's entitled to have his own opinion but the ruby community has its own mind or something like that and it can't listen to me right okay i'm just some guy in some corner of the world okay so um so yeah and they are going in one way but of course this is there but i would be very happy like if somehow like if there was an option to do data science in ruby because one of my first data science experiments I did with Ruby, okay, and it was good. Like I wrote my own libraries, and I was just manipulating CSV files of just few ten thousand rows, and it was few ten thousand to I think like hundred thousand rows, and it was fast. Like, uh, like it was fast, and that's the thing. So, please do go into Sci Ruby if you want. Yeah, you can just uh, use that use its data frames and all those stuff. And uh, uh, this is actually called as Binder, where you can view this Jupyter notebooks and. Uh, uh yeah they have put something like data frames data frames are nothing but like something to do 
with Excel data. I think like it's Excel, Excel on steroids. Excel with a lot of programming uh, stuff built into it. Okay, so that's the thing, right? And uh, yeah, uh, with some plotting, you can do very easy, easy plottings and all those stuff. And oh God, it's even respond. Oh God, it's just even responding to all the scroll and all those stuff. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's good. That's good. That's really, really good. Okay, right. Okay, fine. Okay, and this also responds to scroll. No, it doesn't. Right. Okay. So yeah, you can do a lot of uh, what to say uh, data experiments with Ruby too. But I don't think I'll be covering it in uh, this course or something like. That. Maybe I will never be covering it okay, because. Uh, uh, I'm not doing data science experiments at Ruby. So that's the simple thing, right? So, but yeah, if you want me to cover, just drop a comment or note or something like that. I'd be glad to do it. Like, and possibly if I can uh, make, uh, if I can kindle some Ruby minds to look into data science, that'll be really good, right? So that's what I'm just thinking, right? This one, I just like it. I just like it very much. Okay. For some reason, I just like it. Okay, uh, right. So yeah, this is what uh, iRuby and uh, doing Ruby with Jupyter Notebooks is like. Uh, do give it a try. And I will also write a section about this in my book. And uh, hopefully uh, this will ease, uh, make uh, ease or okay, make you feel very easy to learn Ruby okay? rather than going to this text editor and uh, uh, IRB and uh, then what like terminal and executing programs, this will make your stuff easy, right? Okay, anyway, uh, uh, thanks for watching. I hope uh, this one was, uh, this uh, video was very useful to you, okay? Yeah, please do try it. Uh, I have tried it and it's really good, right? So that's the thing. Okay, thanks for watching, bye.